What's good, Coach Colin Castell here with Shot Mechanics Basketball, and today I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to increasing your shooting range. All right, so a lot of players want to increase their shooting range, and it's actually pretty easy to do. But the problem is there's kind of a lot of segmented videos out there, so I decided to make one full video that covers everything. So the very first thing that we want to think about is having our heels up when we're getting ready to shoot. Meaning as I catch the basketball, I want to have space between my heels right here and the floor. Because what that does is that allows it to act like a natural springboard and it allows my joints to do what they need to do. A lot of times what players do when they're getting ready to shoot, they'll come in and they'll plant their heel into the ground or plant their heel into the ground. And what that does is it sucks all the energy out of your body into the ground and then you've got to kind of regather it. If you watch the best shooters and especially the ones that shoot from range, anytime they're loading into their shot, those heels are up, they're powering off the balls of their feet, and they're getting this nice spring from their elbow or from their ankles that can transfer all the way into their other uh, two major joints into the lower body of their shot. It is amazing. A lot of times, just by getting your heels off the ground, you can increase your shooting range three or four feet just like that with one tiny little tip. So, you know, the biggest one that we see where this comes into an issue is in a one two step coming out of a dribble, right? So, if I'm coming off of a dribble and I'm getting ready to shoot, if I'm going to one two step, a lot of times the second step, we see a plant of the heel coming into it. So what I always like to say is try to stick the toe. Try to stick the toe. Meaning as I'm coming off of the dribble here and I'm coming into it, I want to try to stick this toe so my heel's off the ground. So as I come in, you can see that now my body's loaded and I can use that momentum off of my dribble. If you can stick the toe, you're going to get more pop, more power off that dribble jump shot, a lot more range right away. All right, so the next key you want to think about is loading your hips low. Now your hips are really the secret power pack when it comes to shooting. If you think about any sport like boxing, or you know, baseball or whatever it is, the hips always play a major role in that power. And it's the exact same thing if you're trying to get range because range is power, right? So what I want you to think about is as you're getting ready to shoot, we want to sink these hips on the catch. Meaning as the ball comes and I'm loading into my shot and I'm getting ready to catch it, I want to sink my hips on the catch. That way as soon as my hands touch leather, leather I'm ready to spring and explode all three joints together. Well, we see a lot of times with younger players especially, they'll catch high with their hips and then they'll try to load and spring. So they lose that momentum of their movement going into the shot. And a lot of times it's that just little the kind of missed timing that's gonna cost you about two, three, four feet of power. So we had our first tip. Now as we move to this tip, we can add them together. You might get six, seven feet of range just like that off of these first two. So a great way to kind of tell if you're getting enough hip load is to think about your height and your knee bend, right? If my knees are only bent a little bit, it's gonna be hard for me to load my hips down. So if I can get my knees to where they're bending almost over my toe line right here, that's starting to be about the hip load that we want to see right here. That means we're dropping our bun down and then we're going to get more pop and more spring up. So load those hips and I guarantee you it will give you extra range right away. All right, so the next key we want to think about is the quickness of your load, right? I call it fast down, fast up. Meaning as I'm getting ready to shoot, my load down into my shot as I'm catching or whatever it is, has to be fast as well as my explosion has to be fast. Right? A lot of times we see players and they'll catch and they'll slowly load down and then they'll try to fire up quick. And the problem with this is if I'm going slow down, I'm not starting that creation of momentum. It's almost like you know, if you're trying to throw a punch in boxing and if I'm, if I'm getting ready to throw this, this right right here, if I slowly bring it back, it's going to be a lot harder to throw it forward than if I whip it back and then whip it forward. Right? So it's kind of the same thing. We want to start that momentum as fast as we can. That way we can pop it up as fast as we can. So an analogy that I always like to use is what I call crush the hat. Meaning as I'm getting ready to shoot and I catch the basketball, whether it's high, whether it's over, whether it's you know, wherever it's at, I'm going to pretend like there's a little gnome standing in front of me and he's got a little pointy hat. This sounds super cheesy, but it works. And so I'm thinking about as I'm catching, I want to smash that hat as fast as I can and then load up as fast as I can, right? So if there's that little hat there, if I can smash it down, that means I'm going fast down. That means I'm going fast up. I'm going to generate a lot more momentum and power. So think about fast down, fast up. You're going to increase your range really quickly. All right, so the next thing we want to think about is loading the basketball lower. A lot of times players, when they shoot, they think that they've got to get to their shot pocket right here, kind of up by their shoulder. But the issue with this is as I go to shoot, that means that the ball's not getting that extra momentum and power. If you watch the best shooters on the planet, most all of them at every single level load the ball lower down by their waist or sometimes even down by their thigh. Right? So what I want you to work on is getting in the habit of catching and loading that basketball a little bit lower so your shot pocket's going to be down here somewhere rather than up here. Now I get a lot of pushback from coaches and parents on this because it's not the tried and true style of shooting or you know, kind of the old school style of shooting, but 
it works. And it's unbelievable if you look at every single level from elementary school to junior high to high school to college to pros, pretty much the best shooters at every level do this exact same key. So all you want to think about is no matter where you catch the ball, it could be high on a skip, could be a bullet pass, you want to load it back down as I'm loading my hips, right? The key in sequence that I always say is ball and hips at the same time. Ball and hips at the same time, meaning as my hips go down, the ball should go down. As my hips go up, the ball should go up, right? So if I catch, hips down, ball down, ball up, hips up, right? If I can do that, I'm going to generate more power, more momentum in my shot the very first time I do it. Next thing you need is you've got to have a smooth one motion shot, basically meaning that the ball can't stop or you can't break that powertrain at any point of its path. So what I mean by that is if I bring the ball up too early and it pauses right here, it's going to lose that power as my hips fire and then it's going to come through. A great way to do this is to film yourself, you know, have a friend take a picture, whatever it is. And if you find out that the ball is up by your forehead or your chin, when your hips are still loaded, that's a bad sign. That means that you probably have a two motion jump shot. But if the ball's getting to my forehead as my legs are extending, that means that I've probably got a one motion shot and I'm probably maximizing that power, right? So again, it kind of goes back to the last section we talked about ball and hips at the same time. If I'm firing with my ball and hips at the same time, it should be reaching that set point right as my toes are leaving the ground. So then I should be snapping through on my jump shot as I'm getting into my jump and my power can transfer all the way through my body into the basketball and towards the hoop, right? The smooth one motion jump shot is incredibly important and it's probably the very first thing I would start developing at a young age if you're working with you know, younger players, if you're a trainer or coach, or if you are younger yourself, I would definitely work on this one right out of the gate because it's a huge one to get more power and more range. All right, if you like this video, you're gonna wanna do a few things. Number one, click the first link in the description down below, get a free copy of my sniper shooting challenge. This is a shooting challenge that's gonna really push you as a shooter and really hopefully take you to that next step in your development the very first time you try it. That's how powerful it is. So you definitely wanna click that link in the description down below. And if you're new to shot mechanics, you're gonna to wanna to do a few things. Number one, hit the subscription button. Number two, hit the like button. Number three, head to the comment section down below and leave a comment. Let me know what sort of video you wanna see next. I always say this is a channel for the people, by the people, and we run pretty much everything off a request, so leave it down below and hopefully I'll be able to get to it. Again, I'm Coach Colin with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, splash on.